The follow path constraint allows us to make an object follow a path. In this case, we've got this arrow and we have this ellipse path on the outside. You can see that here in the hierarchy. In this example, we'll have the arrow follow the elliptical path. To do this, the first thing that we'll do is select the arrow and then add a new constraint and choose the follow path constraint. Like with other constraints, we need to select the target. In this case, we'll be selecting the ellipse shape and you'll notice that once we do that, the arrow snaps to the path. Note that it's the shape's origin that snaps to the path, so you can change the origin at any time if you want a different part of the shape to be on that path. Now, if we go down here and check this distance percent, you'll see that once we increase it or decrease it, that causes the shape to move along the path. If we open up the ellipse in edit vertices mode, you'll notice that the 0% distance is the same as the starting vertex. So that's represented by this triangle. Now we can change that by right clicking on another vertex and then using the make first vertex button. Now you'll see if we go into the properties, you can see that we're at that 0% distance and it's aligned itself with that first vertex. You might have also noticed that when we move the arrow along the path, it's automatically oriented to follow the path. But if we want, we can disable this orient option. And so now when we actually move it, you'll see that the rotation never changes. It stays the same. Disabling this option also gives us the opportunity to animate the rotation independently. Now let's look at another example where the path's not closed. It's an open path. So we're gonna constrain the red square to this path. So we're gonna go in, create a follow path constraint, and then set the target to the path. We'll use the hierarchy. Now you'll see if we animate the distance, it'll move along that path. Now let's momentarily disable the constraint and move the origin. Hit Y to freeze the editor, move the gizmo, and then hit enter again. Now we can turn the constraint back on and you can see that now the base of the rectangle is moving along the path. So it's almost like a roller coaster car. Now let's go to animate mode. If we open up the constraints panel, let's look and see what animatable properties we have. So we can animate the strength if we want to, the orientation and the distance. Let's make a quick animation. So we're gonna animate the distance and we'll start by setting a 0% key at the beginning and then go to the end. And then we're gonna type in 99 so that we can get the rectangle all the way to the end. Now, when we play the animation, you'll see that the rectangle moves along the path. In this case, we've left on a one pixel outline that's white so that we can see the path that our rectangle is gonna move along. But you don't actually need this. You could turn this off at any time. Now it's important to note that you're not limited to a single object following a path. In fact, we can take this arrow, create another follow path constraint and target the same path that our rectangle's on. And you can see that we can move it along the path just like we do with the rectangle. Now let's look at a different example. In the previous examples, we've used a single path, but in this case, we have four different paths on one shape layer. So what's gonna happen? Well, let's set up a constraint and find out. So let's select the follow path constraint again, and we will go ahead and target that shape layer. You can see that our arrow is snapped to the first path. And when we go into the distance and we start moving it along the path, it jumps from path to path. As our distance goes over 100%, you'll see that it jumps back to the first path. It's important to note that the order of the paths in the hierarchy determines the order which your arrow is gonna jump. So let's say for example, we take this second path and we move it to the um, bottom. Now let's see how this affects our distance property. So as we increase the distance property, we're gonna skip the second one and jump straight to the third. And again, that's because the third path is now second in the hierarchy. And if we continued to increase the distance, we'd go to the fourth and then the second and then back to the first. And you'll see that this is exactly what happens when we start increasing that distance value again. 
Be sure to double check the order of your pads in your hierarchy so that your distance constraint works properly.